Hello everyone, welcome back. Zargod here. So we're rolling in today number four of our Rivals of Ixalan spoilers. We're gonna have some fun checking out the new cards today. Hope you're gonna enjoy watching the video. If you do, make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So let's take a look at our first card. Okay, so first up we've got Arch of Oraska. This is a land with a send. Uh, taps for a colorless, and you can pay five and tap it to draw a card. I think this card's going to fit well into my limited decks that are a little more grindy, a little more controlling. Um, I think this card will fit very well in Commander as well. I mean, if you have a land that draws a card, that's for my Commander deck. Next up we have Path of Metal, red-white for a legendary enchantment. This is kind of an interesting card. Uh, it says that when it enters play, it does one damage to each creature. It doesn't have First Strike, Double Strike, Vigilance, or Haste. And then if you attack with two creatures, um, each having one of those four abilities, you get to transform the card into Legendary Land. Um, Medzali Tower of Triumph. This uh, land taps for one of mana of any color. You can pay a red and one to do two damage to each opponent, or you can pay one white and two, and you could choose a creature at random that attack this turn, destroy that creature. This is a very, very interesting card. I feel like this card f just firmly fits into Commander just because it's all kind of shenanigans. Um, but this might also be a viable sideboard option since entering play it does one damage to each creature. Additionally, if you are able to fill your deck with creatures that have a lot of these assorted abilities, you may be able to activate this pretty consistently, and the two damage per turn is very relevant, especially in limited. Next up we have Resplendent Griffin, blue, white, and one for a 2-2 flyer. It has Ascend, and if you have City's Blessing, every time you attack with the Griffin, you get to put a 1-1 counter on it. This is fantastic. 2-2 uh, flyers for three always find their way into my limited decks, and this has a huge upside if you do have City's Blessings where it's just going to get bigger and bigger each turn. I like this card. All right, next we got another Dino here, Raging Regisaur, green, red, and two for a 4-4 four, four Dino. I love that right away. 4-4 four, for four, four, four is perfect. I'm going to love this in my Dino decks. It's big. It's powerful. Um, it does have great ability as well when it attacks and can do one damage to a creature or an opponent. This is exactly the card you want to set off all those great and rage abilities your Dinos have. Next up, we've got the Dead-Eye Brawler, blue, black, and two for a 2-4 Human Pirate. This guy's got Death Touch. I like him already. A 2-4 Death Touch is actually pretty good, especially in blue, black, where it'd be a little more controlling. But he also has Ascend, and if you do have City's Blessing, and this guy does combat damage to your opponent, you get to draw a card. This is one of those guys that is, you know, value on the block, value on the attack. Typically, he is a big magnet for removal spells. All right, everybody, we got ourselves a three-headed dino here. We got Sakama, Primal Calamity, six red, green, and white. He's a nine-nine, Vigilant, Reach, Trample. When he comes into play, if you cast him, you get to untap all your lands. Um, I mean, he's got a series of abilities here. Red and two, he gets to do three damage to target creature. Green and two, destroy an artifact or enchantment. White and two, gain three life. I mean, this guy is huge. This card sort of looks like it was designed to be a commander for your dino deck, um, but I still think Gishoth is probably going to be the dino commander you want to use just because that is value all day long. He definitely needs to be included in your commander decks when you're running dinos. I think for limited, if you get a deck that has fixing and ramp, this guy's going to be an absolute bomb. Uh, I don't know if he's going to see any constructed play, but I'm definitely looking forward to trying to tinker around with this guy. Next up we have Sea Legs, one blue for an enchantment. It has Flash. Um, if the enchanted creature is a pirate, it gets plus zero, plus two. If it's not, it gets minus zero, minus two. Pretty versatile combat trick. You can beef your guys to make blocks more favorable, or you can weaken your opponent's guys so you can get a more powerful creature off the board. Not a super strong card, but I think that a copy of this can find its way into my limited decks. Next up we have Moment of Craving. This is an instant that calls black and one. It gives target creature minus two, minus two on the turn, and you get two life out of it. I like these kind of cards. Um, as removal spells. I, I just prefer giving a creature minus power and toughness to get it off the board. This makes blockers easier, um, it can blow out opponent's combat tricks, and it gets rid of those pesky indestructible creatures. Next we have Mutiny, one red for sorcery. This has the target creature and opponent controls, deal damage equal to its power to another target creature that opponent controls. Um, this is like a really dialed back alpha brawl. Um, this isn't a terrible card, I don't mind it. It is situational, there's going to be points in the game where you might not be able to use this card to kill an opponent's creature, but I think that this probably could find a copy in your limited deck. Next up we have Negate, one blue and a colorless, counter token on creature spell. Negate is a staple. I mean, Negate does exactly what you need it to do. It stops your opponent's removal spells. It gets rid of powerful artifacts. I mean, you're going to have a copy of this in your sideboard. If you're playing blue control, you have a copy in your deck. Negate has been and always will be a good card. And speaking of staples, next up we've got Naturalize. Green and one, instant speed, destroy target artifact or enchantment. This card's fantastic. I mean, Naturalize has always been good. Um, you're going to run a copy in your sideboard. You might even run one copy in your main deck. Um, not much else to say about it. 
Although I did like the artwork, well, whoever sword that is is getting absolutely destroyed. Next up we have Fathom Fleet Mutineer. Blue and three for a 3-2 human pirate. It's got a great read ability to return target creature to its owner's hand. And this is fantastic. I mean, this is a, a pirate. It's going to synergize on your pirate decks. Um, it's going to allow you to, you know, take one of your opponent's creatures away from them during the turn. Or even recur one of your own creatures that might have a relevant enter the battlefield effect. Next up, we have Dinosaur Hunter. Black and one for a 2-2 human pirate. Um, whenever he does damage to a dinosaur, you get to destroy that creature. This is just straight up dinosaur hate. I mean, this card's fine right away because it's a pirate, so it's relevant in a faction. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2, and it's actually very important to note that he doesn't have to do combat damage to the dinosaur to destroy it. So I like this card. And next up we have Arterial Flow, black, black, and colorless, sorcery speed. Each opponent discards two cards, and if you control a vampire, they're going to lose two life, and you're going to gain two life. Now, this card is definitely designed to kind of weaken the hand of grindier, more controlling decks, and I actually like it if you're playing maybe two-headed giant or commander, because this is going to punish each of your opponents. Next up we have the Sun Crested Pterodon, white and four for a 2-5 flying dino. If you control another dino, this card is going to get flying. Um, yeah, this is nothing crazy. This isn't a super aggressive card. It does have a big body, so if you're trying to go blue-white flyers, this guy's going to serve that purpose to be a good blocker while getting in some damage as well. Next up, we got the Buccaneer's Bravado. Red and one for instant speed. You get to pick one of these abilities. You can give target creature plus one, plus one to first strike, or you can give target pirate plus one, plus one to double strike to end a turn. This is a fine combat trick. It's nothing over the top. I think it's balanced, um, and this will definitely find a copy in my limited decks. Next up, we have Hornswoggle. Well, this card wins weirdest name in the set. Um, blue and two. This is going to allow you to counter target creature spell, and you get to create yourself a treasure token as well. Hornswoggle is basically just remove soul, cost one more. I play remove soul when it's in a set. I'll play Hornswoggle on my blue decks. Next up, we have Pitiless Plunderer, black and three for one four human pirate. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get to make a treasure token. Um, this card, I think, with uh, Ruthless Knave is actually going to be pretty crazy if you're trying to combo off with Revel and Riches or Makeshift Munitions. By itself, not an exceptional card, but if you're looking to put the combo pieces together, this will help you get there. Next up, we have Silver Armored Ferocidon. Uh, two red and five for an 8-5 dino. Got a great enrage trigger here. Each opponent sacrifices a permanent. Not in love with the five toughness for seven casting costs, but if you're playing with cards like Forerunner of the Empire, Raging Regisaur, you're going to be able to trigger this ability multiple times and easily uh, to really kind of punish your opponent. And I think this card would actually be a lot of fun as well in uh, your commander deck with dinos. Next up, we have Wayward Swordtooth, green and two for a 5-5 dino. This guy's got a send, lets you play an extra land on each of your turns, uh, but he can't attack or block unless you have the City's Blessing. Now this guy on turn three doesn't do a lot. He does allow you to kind of dump more lands onto the board, so if you have a way to draw extra cards, he's certainly gonna be valuable then. But I feel like this card is more than likely something you can play mid to late game as a big creature that allow you to play an extra spell that turn. Next up, we've got the Mastermind's Acquisition. Black, black, and two. Sorcery Speed allows you to search your deck for any one card, place that card into your hand, or you can choose a card you own from outside of the game and place that in your hand. Well, when I play Limited, I like Diabolic Tutor. This is a better Diabolic Tutor. I'll certainly play one copy of this, especially if I've got a bomb or two on my deck that I'm looking to get to. Next up, we've got the Dire Fleet Poisoner. Black and one for two, two Human Pirate. This guy's got Flash, he's got Death Touch. And a great ability as well. Uh, when he comes into play, target attacking pirate you control gets plus one, plus one, and death touch on a turn. Very versatile card. You can play this on your opponent's turn to, block, to chump block a large attacker. You can play it on your turn to punish your opponent for blocking one of your smaller pirates. This is very versatile. I really, really like this card a lot. Next up, we've got Dire Fleet Daredevil. Um, human Pirate, it's a red and one for two one first strike. I mean, that's an auto include in my pirate decks right there. But it's got a great ability too. When it comes into play, exile target instant or sorcery in your opponent's graveyard, and then you can use your mana as if it's any color to cast that spell until end of turn. It's like a weird pirate snapcaster-ish kind of card. I like this a lot. Two on first strike for two is fantastic, and then you get to cast your opponent's best removal spell. Next up, we have Crafty Cut Purse, blue and three for a two-two human pirate. This card's got flash. And it says that until end of turn, whenever a token enters play under your opponent's control, that token will enter play under your control instead. So what we've got ourselves here is a sideboard card uh, against those vampire decks that are just absolutely going off, or those dino decks that are making a lot of polyraptor tokens. Next up we've got Blood Sun, red and two for an enchantment. When it enters play, you get to draw a card, and all lands lose all abilities except for mana abilities. I don't see this doing a lot in limited, um, and this card I don't think is going to replace Blood Moon anytime soon. 
but it may find its way into some sideboard at some point. But for me, probably not one I'm going to be interested in. Next up, we have Champion of Twilight, double black and three for 4-4 four, four Vampire. Great ability here. When it comes into play, you lose X life and draw X cards, X equaling the amount of vampires you control. This card's fantastic. This is a great payoff if you're playing a vampire deck. Um, and you're going to have to refill your hand mid to late game and just keep putting more and more pressure on your opponent. Next we've got Disperse and Wind. Blue and 2 for an instant speed allows you to exile target online permanent and then the owner of that permanent can cast it without paying its mana calls for as long as it remains exiled. I like this card. Uh, in limited this is going to allow you to save your creature from your opponent's removal or if uh, a pump spell would make a block or an attack unfavorable you can reset that. It also lets you re-trigger enter the battlefield effects and actually this card will be pretty fun with Torrential Gear Hole as well. Next up, we've got a big white dino here, Trap Jaw Regisaur. Two white and three for a 5-5 dino. Great Enrage Trigger. Allows you to exile target creature and opponent controls until the Regisaur leaves play. Um, I mean, this is just a big dino with a great upside. If you can trigger that Enrage once or twice during the game, this is going to be very, very powerful. Next up we have Slaughter the Strong, double white and one, sorcery speed, says that each player chooses any number of creatures with power four or less and sacrifices the rest. Um, this card kind of feels like it says, hey, I'm playing vampires, you're playing dinosaurs, let's fix that. I think this is also going to be a pretty interesting card in Commander, where you can really craft a board state while punishing all your opponents. Next up we have the Twilight Prophet, double black and two for two four flying vampire with ascent. I'm already going to pick this card pretty high, two four flyer for four, being a vampire is going to be pretty strong in my book, but the fact that if you have the city's blessing, at the beginning of your upkeep you get to reveal the top card of your library, place it in your hand, and then drain your opponent for X, and you gain X life, X being the casting cost of the card, makes this very very strong. You get a two four flyer for four, you get card advantage, and you get to potentially drain your opponent, this is easily first pickable. Next up, and lastly, today we have Azor's Gateway. Uh, this is a legendary artifact, costs two to cast. Uh, pay one, tap it, you have to draw a card, and then you exile a card from your hand. Uh, once you have five cards exiled um, with the gateway that have uh, five different converted mana calls, you can untap it, gain five life, and transform it. Transforms into a legendary land here, the Sanctum of the Sun. I'll let you add X mana to your mana pool of any one color, X being your life total. This is actually a really, really good card. I like this one a lot. This allows you to craft your hand, you know, get rid of spells or extra lands that you don't need at that time. And then once you flip this card, it's going to let you go big. I think in limited, this card's really going to shine on the dino decks because you're going to be able to ramp into those big dinos a lot faster and more consistently. And absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, this card is going to be a lot of fun uh, to combo off with in Commander. All right, everyone. Well, that's going to be it for all of our Rivals of Vixalon spoilers today. Um, you know, I'm enjoying checking these cards out. I'm, I'm liking the power levels of everything that they've, they've shown us so far. I look forward to seeing what else they're going to spoil uh, tomorrow. I uh, hope you had a lot of fun checking these out with me. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.